I heard that 10 year olds were destroying Sephora over Drunk Elephant. And you know how you look at things on the internet and you're like, that's a lie. Or, okay, that happened once and people are blowing it out of proportion. I decided to investigate by going to a local Sephora. This is disgusting. I can't even be bothered to put this back. Animals. Sorry. I was disgusted and I'm still a bit speechless about what my eyes have seen. And we need to talk about tweens and teenagers and their new obsession with Drunk Elephant, why this brand is even relevant still, and have a conversation about skincare, but also being socially responsible. Because as a consumer, it disgusts me to see this. I cannot imagine what Sephora employees are having to put up with. Where are these kids' parents? Kids, literal teenagers, were bumping into me as if to try to get me out of the way so that they could get their hands on Drunk Elephant. And I was, I'm still, like, I'm, I'm speechless. I'm beyond words because I can't believe this actually happened. On the internet, it's no surprise that sometimes people blow things out of proportion, right? Something happened once and it's so shocking or abhorrent that it just goes viral. I thought that this was one of those things where something had happened and everyone just loves to point the fingers at the younger generations, right? The boomers did it to the millennials, the millennials are doing it to the Gen Xs and the alphas and the cycle continues. People just love to point fingers at other generations saying it's so bad and they're terrible and they're doing everything wrong because we all grew up with slightly different ideals and social nuances, right? Well, I chalked this up to it being just drama. <laughs> and then I decided to go look at a Sephora. I, God, I just, I, I don't know how to even talk about this. So this all started because of TikTok, because of course it did. You see, Drunk Elephant is a brand that we've actually covered multiple times before. The founder is pretty questionable and has actually gotten into drama with a lot of other educated skincare consumers, as well as skincare founders, like The Ordinary's founder, Brandon Truax. He saw that Drunk Elephant was making their marula oil for $68. And he said, I know exactly where that marula oil comes from and I can get it from the same place. And he did, and he charges $11.40 for it. He has passed away now, but The Ordinary's product is still there. And and um, that's one reason that there's rivalry between Drunk Elephant and The Ordinary. But even Caroline Hirons, she's a facialist in the UK. She's a book author on skincare. She knows her stuff. She's had a blog for years and she has a skincare line now. And she asked some questions to the Drunk Elephant team and they were just assholes to her, like objectively assholes. And I don't understand how Drunk Elephant is still relevant, but it kind of saw this upsurge in recent years. And that upsurge really correlates with views we see on TikTok. Now, here's the thing. When I log into TikTok, a lot of the people who I'm following or I'm mutual friends with happen to be doctors or dermatologists. And I've seen all these doctors and derms basically saying, these are the drunk elephant products that are approved or not approved for children. And I'm like, wait a minute, <laughs> why are children buying $68 marula oil and like $78 moisturizers? And the TikTok algorithm is scary. Like it gets you in a loop and it knows what you're looking for. It was creepy. But next thing you know, I was surfaced this video of an 11 year old or like a 10 year old doing her skincare routine with drunk elephant. And I'm sitting there and I was like, how are these 11 year olds affording this? Why is an 11 year old using this? And you know, I've seen many different people put skincare on before. It was really shocking to see someone so young with, you know, such unproblematically seeming skin hyper fixated on this routine. I was actually having a, um, a dinner with a friend in New York City and she has a skincare line and she asked me, what are your opinions on Sephora? And this was before TikTok was servicing me these videos. And I literally said to her, I feel like Sephora used to be a place that I would go when I was 16 to 25. I would be shopping for my beauty essentials. I would feel a little intimidated when I walked in, but it was like prestigious, right? And it was the only real beauty destination for the more high-end stuff outside of a department store that had shoes and clothing and everything else. And I said, nowadays, I feel like Sephora is just for rich young kids and like their soccer moms. And she actually thought that the demographic or the customers of Sephora were skewing even younger than I did. I thought it was still teenagers. Um, but again, maybe TikTok was like listening in my conversations and then they started serving me these videos. And upon seeing these videos, I started to look more at Drunk Elephant and I saw news articles as well as literal products they have launched, but also posts they have done talking about which products are okay for kids to use. It looks like their marketing is actively targeting children. They're like, hey, some 10 year old is willing to pay $68 for our marula oil? 
bring in the money, let's create some posts for them. Now this is where I started to get suspicious because I started to see all of these articles about women and men and people who were going into Sephora and they were basically being bullied by bratty preteens in the store. And knowing that it is so typical to call teens bratty and like, you know, there's that teenage attitude, I kind of thought, Maybe this was one experience, but there's no way it's happening this many times. And I saw so many articles and then so many TikTok posts of people speaking about how teenagers were rude to them and it's these young kids and they're mushing around all these products and destroying the displays and shoplifting. And I was like, okay, a couple instances, sure, but like, let's not blow this out of proportion. There are plenty of young people who are great consumers who respect the displays and use testers while that is disgusting. And we've seen literal skin infections come from testers. I've used testers before as well, I have to say it, I do. But some people use testers appropriately. And I thought these are just some cases of people who aren't and because everyone loves to hate everyone on the internet and it's inflammatory that it went viral. That's when I decided to test it. And I said, you know, instead of just looking at these posts on the internet, watching 10 year olds do their routines, watching people about having 10 year olds buy products or take products from their hands in Sephora, let me go to Sephora and investigate this myself. Oh boy, <laughs> oh boy. Well, as I was driving to Sephora, I was thinking about the Drunk Elephant brand and kind of how it really quickly, in my opinion, made this resurgence and how the brand has actually changed. And let's talk about that for a hot minute because Drunk Elephant has always had these white bottles with like these really colorful neon caps, right? And they've always had this like clean marketing and like their marula oil, um, it's really expensive that they're arguably charging a little bit too much for and some people are buying it. And again, the founder has come under so much scrutiny for attacking customers. The brand has come under scrutiny for attacking others. And Drunk Elephant has literally said multiple times that you can only use their brand, just theirs and not others, because you should be able to mix and match. First off, mixing and matching is not always a good idea because a vitamin C could have a very different pH level than something like a basic cleanser or a moisturizer that's at like a 5.5 to mimic skin. But um, Drunk Elephant was basically saying, only buy our products, they're the only ones that work, and ours don't irritate your skin, even though they have retinoids, but everyone else's does. Well, whatever. Recently, Drunk Elephant launched these Littles packs, and I'm not saying they're targeting kids, uh, but I'm just saying, when you call it the Littles, and when you have something like this, or like Mommy and Me, I mean, that does look like they're targeting the younger generation, no? And here's the thing, brands have been shameless about admitting this at times. Even Gwyneth Paltrow, you know how she recently launched her Goop Junior? <laughs> like, the discounted Goop line that is meant to literally target Gen Z and Gen Alpha. They have said, we are planning to pew, target Gen Z, and Gen Alpha, because that's where the money is. And as they grow up, they'll be customers for life. In marketing, traditionally, people would target moms because mothers usually purchased things for the household. And like people assumed that when they have kids, the moms will be buying the kids stuff up until they're teenagers. But now, I don't know, the new trend in marketing for brands is apparently to target them while they're young. Amazon's been doing it. Gwyneth Paltrow's Goop has been doing it. And based on these products and specifically what Drunk Elephant has posted on social media, it kind of seems like either they're blatantly doing it on purpose or they're just like hey we got 68 dollar moisturizers and marula oil whoever wants to pay for it come on feel free come on they literally made this post on instagram that says which products are and are not good for teens and children and Again, that's great that Drunk Elephant is educating teens and children on what should or shouldn't be used, but this is not going to stop children from purchasing Drunk Elephant. And the only person who should be responsible for someone underage purchasing skincare should be the parent, guardian, or caretaker of that child, which we need to talk about based on what happened with the lack of parents and guardians and caretakers in the Sephora that I went to. Literally kids were running into me and then I said, sorry. Why was I apologizing when they ran into me? Probably childhood trauma, but that's a story for another day. It's actually a story for just a minute in this video. So whether or not Drunk Elephant is doing it on purpose, they're obviously making money off of this and they're creating these little miniature sets. Now, Drunk Elephant can sell their products to whoever they want, but here's the thing. When it comes to children's skin, children have the same anatomy that an adult does. We have layers of the skin, the epidermis, the dermis, the hypodermis, fat, fascia, muscle, etc. And the basics of a good skincare routine are the same. You need to have a good cleanser for hygiene and a good sunscreen 
sunscreen to protect your skin from the sun. That is why we have baby cleansers and baby sunscreens, and we have since I've occupied space on this rock. Well, there are many issues that young skin deals with. There's things like baby acne. There's things like cradle cap. I'm so honored to know an amazing pediatric dermatologist, Dr. Heidi Gadarzi. You need to check her out, but she helps care for the babies and their terrible skin concerns. And young people struggle a lot with skin, especially when it comes to the teenage years and having acne. Hi, that was literally me. Acne during my teenage years that actually started when I was 10, 11 years old, it sucked. However, a lot of kids don't don't have a damaged skin barrier. And it's not good for young kids or children to be purchasing things that could damage their skin barrier, like retinoids, like extensive vitamin Cs, layering multiple products, not knowing what they're doing, and actually causing issues that will then have to be corrected, especially for the price that Drunk Elephant is charging. And that's why they said these products are or aren't approved for kids, but still, this kind of expensive stuff for kids? Again, this must be coming from their parents' money. And just the way parents have always bought kids like expensive little designer Burberry sneakers or Balenciaga or whatever the trend is nowadays, I'm actually not that mad about the fact that kids are using expensive skincare or the fact that kids are using adult skincare. It's the strange way Drunk Elephant is pivoting their brand to literally, seemingly, allegedly, what it appears to be, market and target these kids. And then the lack of parental responsibility by just giving kids money, letting them wander into the store, push me around, which was literally shocking, and literally destroy these product shelves. I thought this was a lie. And while I was driving to Sephora thinking about all these things, I was like, I'm gonna go see it. It's not gonna be a big deal. And I'm gonna prove that things go viral on the internet because it's inflammatory and that gets our stupid amygdalas, the stupid organ in between our ears, the brain is hyped jacked in this one little cock pilot area by fear and shock and says, oh my God, I can't believe that happened. And it spreads like wildfire and I was going to debunk it. Well, I couldn't do that because the store was closed. <laughs> literally, the store was closed. And as I was like, oh no, Sephora, there were literally teenage girls walking up behind me who were like, oh, just as shocked. So what did I do? Instead of throwing a fit, I was actually kind of shocked about the teenage girls, but I decided, okay, I'm gonna go to the next nearest location. And I was driving over there, even thinking about my experience with Drunk Elephant products, because again, they're really expensive and most of them are not even that good. <laughs> and if you want a list of hits and misses from Drunk Elephant, what works and what doesn't, what's worth it, what's not, I'm happy to do that because I think there are some products that can be decent, but there's also a lot of dupes that I've actually spoken before about in this video. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. Um, but there's a lot of products like the Ordinary's Marula Oil that are very similar, if not almost identical, but for a fraction of the price. And if you want a list of products that are not suggested, I'm happy to share. But at the end of the day, if somebody either doesn't know about the other alternatives, doesn't know about the history of the brand, or if they just like Drunk Elephant and want to buy it, no big deal, right? Well, apparently other people do have issues with this, which is why so many people have been talking about what kids can or can't use online. And this was the next question that came into my mind is, why is this so popular with the youth? Why is this so popular with the younger generation? Because at this point, as I was driving to the second Sephora store, I was like, I've probably seen 10 videos of people under the age of 14 using Drunk Elephant products. And I, I was kind of, trying to figure it out and it hit me. I was like, oh my God, Play-Doh. <laughs> Do you remember kids eating Play-Doh <laughs> or their own scabs or their own boogers? That may or may not have been me. I didn't eat the Play-Doh, but <laughs> there was some other nasty shit that I put in my mouth as a five-year-old. Anyways, kids do weird stuff. And kids who hopefully have access to toys and stuff play with bright colored finger paints. They play with Play-Doh, right? And look at what Drunk Elephant promotes. They literally promote making skin smoothies where you pump the top of the moisturizer, mix in your bronzing drops and, you know, beat your face. And if kids, are exposed to this on social media and they're watching it and they have a natural affinity for these textures or these things that remind them of Play-Doh that they were playing with three years earlier. Not to mention the caps of Drunk Elephant. Do you see how bright and neon these are? They look like highlighters. Do these not look like toys or building blocks? It makes total sense that kids and young teenagers and preteens would gravitate towards a line that looks nostalgic to what they used to have. I mean, heck, I grew up on the internet. I used to play Neo 
Neopets. <laughs> I had the Neopets. I was trying to get a paintbrush. I used to love Lisa Frank and the backpacks with the colors. The EOS lip balms. I've been seeing people say that the EOS lip balms was like our version of the drunk elephant back then. And when you look at all these things, I look at them and I reminisce and I realize, oh my gosh, for a lot of the youth, like the really young gen alpha right now, they're probably seeing drunk elephant as this elevated Play-Doh, this elevated finger paint. Based on the way drunk elephant is packaged and has always been packaged, it looks like something that a child would gravitate to. I don't fault drunk elephant for that, but seeing that the kids are now being exposed to adults doing their skincare routines online, people like me or Harper's Bazaar doing go to bed with me videos, seeing people mix up their products, it makes sense that they would want to try that. Here's the problem. It can be tried responsibly and with parental supervision and with the approval of a doctor or dermatologist who knows this kid's skin, their acne problems or what they're struggling with, or, <laughs> It could be approached like the kids that I was about to run into, who apparently have credit cards or mom's money or whoever's money, dad's money, I don't freaking know, and think it's okay to make a disaster out of a display, literally run into other customers and be rude, and then third, cause potential retail damage to an establishment. I was not prepared for what I was about to find. So I parked in my parking spot and I walk into Sephora and I'm looking around and literally on my right, as I'm walking in, there's a drunk elephant display and it looks good. It's not destroyed. It's not nasty. Like it's right here next to security. And I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, this isn't bad at all. I told everyone, I told the internet, it was all a lie and people are just running with the drama because one kid did it once and it looks inflammatory and we just love to sh on other people these days, right? And as I'm looking at this, I'm like, wait a second, there's actually not all the products here. Where are all the products I was looking for? And the store was packed. And again, I'm wearing these, which are my sun patches. So I was kind of feeling a little, not insecure, but just, I don't know, being in public since the pandemic without a face mask just makes me feel weird. And this like brings more attention to me. Anyways, I was feeling weird. There were kids everywhere. And I was walking by and I was like, oh my God, there's gotta be 50 kids in this store. There were some moms, there were some other people, but like the majority were people like under the age of 18. And that was shocking to me. I was not expecting it. But I made my way through the store and I was like, aha, drunk elephant. And it happened to be in the very back of the store on like the back wall next to the inky list. And I'm like, trying to get through the crowd and like there's literally kids everywhere and I was kind of shocked at how young they were skewed. I even remember there was a girl on TikTok who was like, let me walk through Sephora and count how many kids there are. I did not expect to relive that experience, but I, uh, yeah, I absolutely did. And when I walked to this drunk elephant display, <laughs> I shocked, saddened, disgusted. I'm still at a loss for words. And let me just show you. This is disgusting. I can't even be bothered to put this back. Animals. I'm sorry. I was not expecting it to look anything like the internet and I feel like it was worse. Those glossy drops things, I've been seeing so many people use those. Someone decided to just squirt them all in another product and literally make a giant mess. Like this was a sanitary issue. I was just so disheartened. I was like, I was having anxiety. I was so anxious. I'm like, okay, let me put the products back on the shelf where they belong. I was trying to clean it up. And every single time I like looked, it got worse. The lids were left off. One of them was oozing, not just one moisturizer, but two were like destroyed. There's things out of place, things being ripped out of bottles. I was having like, I was having a moment. It was an anxiety moment. And growing up with acne, having skin that looked like this, where literal children would follow me around a grocery store and ask their mom, hey, mommy, mommy, what's wrong with her face? Um, that left scars on me, both literally and figuratively. And there was like a moment, I kind of felt my heart like coming back up in my chest. And it kind of took me back to being 16 with acne, trying to navigate a CVS because again, I didn't have Sephora money and my mom didn't give me $65 for a moisturizer. I remember this anxiety that I would feel in CVS trying to find something to cover my acne. And even though it's years later and I've cleared my skin, I'm a medical esthetician, I could not help but feel like, I, like on the verge of like a panic attack. I've had panic attacks before. You feel like your world is ending. And like my, <laughs> like it started bubbling up, right? And I was just like, this is 
unreal and I was hyper fixated on the display, but I think that I was hyper fixated on it because of what was going on around me. There was a group of like kids, teenagers, tweens on the left of me, like a big group and they were being really loud and I couldn't even pay attention to what they were talking about. But I felt like it was one of those moments of me years ago where I would have walked into a classroom or into the locker room in school and just have that group of kids bully me. And they were about the same age too, maybe a little bit younger. And all of this anxiety started welting up in me. There was also a couple people to the right of me and they were all just loud, rude, and um, shoving their hands in everything. And again, maybe I was experiencing the spotlight effect where I felt like everything was on me and it really wasn't, no, nobody cared, but it really felt like the world was closing in on me and like I was having a rough time and I haven't felt like this in years. I was not expecting, first off, to find such debauchery on the shelf. And then second off, I wasn't expecting to be having diaphoresis and sweating and dilated pupils and like feeling my heart rate increase. Let me show you, this little ring tracks my heart rate, like my fitness and my sleep and stuff like that. Let me show you my literal aura ring chart because my stress levels were like whoosh, like my pulse just exploded. And next thing you know, I'm like hyper fixating on this drunk elephant mess, trying to clean things up because at least I'm doing something like it gives me control over the situation, boom someone runs into me and it's a young teenage boy. And I wasn't actually expecting um, young teenage boys to be uh, obsessed with Drunk Elephant, but he was, and he was like reaching for something. And I was like, whoa, whoa. And it was literally something that I had just put back in place and he's like starting to pump it out, right? I was like, okay. And um, it was so weird. I said, sorry. I'm sorry. Why am I apologizing for you running into me, pushing me over and grabbing a product just to like pump it on your hands and swatch it? Anyways, he brings it back over to his gangle of friends. And then there were like, I think it was like two girls right over here. And there was one that I felt like she was interested in the drunk elephant. You know, like when you feel someone looking over your shoulder, but I was like, let me just like make heads and tails of what's happening in front of me here. And um, I was so freaked out. Normally when I have anxiety, I will pet a dog or a cat. I will find the pet in the room and I will gravitate towards it. And then number two, if there's no pet in the room, which there wasn't, um, I will pull out my phone. And I was like, oh my God, it's time to post a B-Real. <laughs> so I posted a B-Real. If you're not following on B-Real, let's be friends. Um, I really like B-Real because you can't edit your photos. It's just take it and go. But I was posting this B-Real and I kind of felt like this girl was trying to um, like get to the section. So I was kind of trying to hurry it up and I was also feeling really uncomfortable. But next thing you know, boom, I get bumped again. <laughs> and this time from the other side. And it wasn't the girl who I felt like was looking over my shoulder, but it was like, I don't know where she spawned from, but just some young teenager was like, uh. So um, that happened and I just got so freaked out. I was like, oh my God, there's an Inky List product that somebody put right in the middle of the Drunk Elephant display. So I kind of put it back over to the Inky List. Literally the second I stepped away from the Drunk Elephant display, this giant posse of teenagers and tweens literally goes right into the drunk elephant section. And I'm like, oh my God. And I'm sitting here and I'm recording. I'm like, okay, first off, did I actually see this? And then I was so shocked at what I saw. I was like, uh, let, let me make sure that I got the footage because I need to show others that this actually happened. I thought this was a lie, but like, please go to your local Sephora. Is this happening to you? Like, holy so anyways, I was just overwhelmed at this point. I've been run into twice. There's so much noise and stimulation going on around me. My heartbeat is in my throat. I'm feeling anxious as hell. And I'm not even going to attempt to clean up the sanitary part of this. I'm just looking at, there's a glob of moisturizer over here. Someone's nasty ass used cotton pad is over here. There's a hair in the lip gloss. I just tried to put the caps back on products, put the products where they belong. And literally kids are like grabbing them as I'm doing that. I'm like, holy f these people online were not exaggerating. You see these people on TikTok and they're recreating what happened. I thought, oh, they're just making that up. They just want views. <gasps> Holy f like I actually am not very comfortable right now. And um, I, it, it actually has been making me sweat. Like I'm actually sweating. Oh my God, I could not wait to get out of there. And I decided, you know what? Avert, avert, uh, inky list, ordinary uh, glow recipe. And I ran on over to glow recipe. And what's so crazy is that glow recipe, just like Drunk Elephant has this bright, fun packaging. I could see it being attractive to someone who's used to playing with finger paint and Play-Doh and hot cars. Did, did people even play with hot cars anymore? 
more. What are the kids into these days? Anyways, the other sections like the inky list and the ordinary were not as destroyed, but even the colorful, fun brands like Glow Recipe wasn't nearly as destroyed as Drunk Elephant. And I didn't really want to pill through the store because I was having an anxiety issue, but I was like, the Murat section wasn't destroyed. The Dr. Dennis Gross section wasn't destroyed. I was like, why is Drunk Elephant so disgustingly run through? Like are kids doing this on purpose or have they seen the TikToks and they're just trying to emulate it because they think it's funny to be little nuisances? Or is that just me playing into a stereotype and trying to like point fingers at others and be like, oh, it's so gross. And like, this is just how people are these days. And literally when I was at the Glow Recipe section, I turned around to look at the Drunk Elephant section again. And I remember that girl that was like behind my shoulder. It was like, I kind of felt like looking at things. She had made a beeline for the Drunk Elephant section. She had a cute little backpack on, but she starts swatching products. And I hope she was swatching responsibly. She must have been like between the ages of 13 and 14 maybe 15, not, not even 15, she was young. But I just left at that point. I was like, I gotta go. And again, I was gonna buy another glue recipe toner. I was like, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. And I'm speechless. Like, I'm out of words. I, I couldn't form a sentence. I'm, <laughs> I'm like actually shocked. I was shocked and disgusted, like actually disgusted because of the sanitary issue from what I saw. And also like, these kids were rude. They were nuisances. And I'm trying to like conceptualize in my brain, was I just having an anxiety attack? And did I just feel like eyes were on me and I was being judged and I really wasn't? Or were like these kids actually being really rude and destroying the store? But again, like two ran into me. No one grabbed a product out of my hands and that's better than what happened on TikTok. So we gonna go ahead and that one? It's last one. Yeah, I was thinking about getting it, mine. But you're a boy. <laughs> but like, holy f I just like, I'm still having a problem processing this because I'm like, wait a minute, where's your manners? Where are your parents? Again, who's buying this? Where's the money coming from? You know, it's not Sephora's job to parrot these children. And listen, honestly, tell me if I'm wrong, but like, I think that kids deserve to have good hygiene and it's better to get a good cleanser and a good sunscreen now and know what's good and avoid the bullshit so you can have a good skincare routine that works for you. But that's very different than mixing things together, destroying a shelf. It looked like products had been pulled out of packages. I didn't actually count them, but I would not have been surprised if there was an issue with shoplifting. I think I'm shocked and speechless. Like I'm, I, I'm never speechless. I'm actually speechless. Just shocked on so many levels that the one store that I happened to go to on a random day actually happened to look like this. The sheer age, the median age of the demographic in this store is so much younger than I remember. And then like, holy f like I actually had a really bad experience. And like, as an older consumer, I'm literally like, I am not interested in um <laughs> going back into this store because this was a terrifying experience. Like, where are these children's parents? It is the job of parents to know what your kid is watching online, who your kid is talking to, and what skincare they're putting on your face. And I know that that can be really, really, really hard, especially in a world where online predators are everywhere. Kids have phones in their hands. It is so much harder now to parent than it was in the past because of all the dangers. I fully get that. But that doesn't absolve a parent or a caretaker for that responsibility. And part of that responsibility is either educate your child and giving your teen the right resources, whether that's a dermatologist, uh, trusted sources online, helping your child discern what is misinformation and not, helping grow them into healthy, happy, hopefully functioning little adults who can rub two brain cells together to start a fire, right? And I'm just like, where are these parents? And I have to be honest, like I as a kid, I'm sure I know for a fact I had bratty moments. I've done some sh stuff. I shoplifted before. Not okay. I'm so glad I got caught. But like, yes, I understand there's a stereotype that tweens and teens are bratty, but I felt like this was next level. And again, maybe I'm biased. Maybe I'm forgetting half the that I did as a kid and as a teenager that was absolutely terrible. Cause I know that I did. I'm sure I did. I've had shitty moments and I had to learn from them in order to be a not shitty person or a less shitty person, right? But I'm like, it's not Sephora's job to parent your kids. And where the f are the parents of these children? These poor employees having to clean this sh I don't care how much they're making, give them a d raise. I, I, I'm still in shock that this has happened. And first off, I also just don't like Drunk Elephant as a whole. So out of all the brands that this could happen to, 
I mean, I, I'm glad it's not happening to the ordinary, then I'd be really pissed. But like, if you want alternatives to Drunk Elephant that are first off actually worth the money, really good products and made by awesome people that aren't assholes to their customers. Um, again, Glow Recipe, a little more on the expensive side, but fantastic products, amazing women who started it and really, really fun packaging. Bubble Skincare. Bubble was actually who I was having that conversation with on um, Saturday dinner. She was the one who was asking me about support. Bubble Skincare is amazing and it's made for the youth. It's made to be accessible, inexpensive, effective. They have good actives and teach you how to use them and they're fantastic products but they're made by someone who gives a sh and they're made for the youth and they actually donate to mental health initiatives. Amazing. And then outside of Bubble, there's Bioma Skincare, which actually is very similar packaging to Drunk Elephant. You can find it at Target. There's a lot of really great options out there that aren't Drunk Elephant, but it's not even about the products at this point, or it's not even about should kids have skincare routines at this point, because everyone deserves good hygiene and good sun protection, just the way babies and infants do all the way to older adults and geriatric communities. The issue is, what the f has happened to our society? Where are your parents? I think that's, I, I'm, I'm out of words, but like, where are the parents? What do you think of all this? Can you please go to your local Sephora for me and tell me, is it this bad? Ah, I just, I don't understand. Please go check out your Sephora because I felt like I was going crazy. I feel anxious. <laughs> Teenagers are destroying Sephora over Drunk Elephant. And I thought that it was all an internet hoax. And as of my personal experience at one store, it is very, very real. If you don't know the history behind Drunk Elephant, go watch this video next, um, because this talks about why the elephants aren't drunk, the founder is, um, and what she said on social media that we didn't talk about here. Please go click on this next. And if you want a video on what's actually worth it or not from Drunk Elephant, uh, they are cruelty free. I don't like to buy them. I won't buy them, but maybe I could get some swatches. Happy to share my opinion soup with you so that you can indulge in it and um, share with you what is or isn't worth the money from my perspective. I need to go take a bath. <laughs> I need to go take a bath and meditate, okay? I'm like, ah, I still am a little um, dumbfounded by what I saw. Yeah, uh, parent your kids, okay? Love you guys. <laughs> See you in this next video, bye.